Add it up. Welcome, welcome back. And that's a story. <laughs> Welcome back for another uh, Pizza Talks episode. Um, today, episode 41. Episode 41, correct. Uh, I am your host today, Ana Maria, and today's special guest. Oh, thank you. Yorgis. Oh. And today we'll be talking about unpopular beliefs and perhaps we might touch on um, conspiracy theories. Conspiracies, I think, ooh. I think you have some, uh, it's maybe an area of your expertise, I've been told. <laughs> uh, I, I dabble in stuff. I have some tinfoil hats and I'm afraid of aliens, so what can I okay, say? Okay, well, I have no idea, so uh, this will be a very nice lesson for me today. But before we begin, I think we should touch on the this week's events that are coming up for anybody who's interested. So the Nikos Ramos exhibition is still going on. Uh, we also have a lecture about um, the Christianization of urban space in late antiquity. Um, we also have uh, the Dury Roadshow of 2023, and the destination is Ioannina. It'll be Ooh. quite nice to see. So for anybody who's interested, check those out. It's a good opportunity. Indeed. And I think we should wish everybody as well a happy long weekend. Kalila Gana. <laughs> I think everybody is going to be having lots of fun this weekend. Lots of activities organized, lots of costumes and dress up. Dress up uh, for the people going to Patra, uh, have fun. Uh, we envy you. Be careful <laughs> and have fun. Be responsible, stay safe. Indeed. Um, also, uh, the kites on Monday. That's on Monday, right? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. clean Monday. Got yeah. I, I have a childhood trust. I, I do have a childhood. <laughs> but yeah, uh, happy kite flying. Kale uh, Lagana, Topame. Um, all that, yeah. So, topic? Unpopular beliefs. Indeed. Would you like to begin? Oh, I am going to begin. And since, since this is the Pizza Talks podcast, and still, no pizza, I'm going to bring the pizza into topic. Mm. I have to edit this, so it's kind of weird talking to myself while editing. Hi, future self. Anyways, <laughs> pizza and pizza crust. You have ordered a pizza for yourself. Okay. You are eating the pizza. You are going to start by eating a slice, another slice, another slice. At some point, why eat the whole slices when you can like eat the good part and leave the crust? Yeah, but some people might say that the crust is the good part. I'll tell you why. If you get stuffed crust, what's the point no, of no. paying? Okay. Uh, the normal crust, without the, the stuffing. The normal crust, which averagely, here in Greece at least, is basically stale bread after the first 10 minutes because it goes cold. If it's stuffed crust with like Philadelphia or like, I have seen stuffed crust with sausage and cheese. <laughs> That's an appetizer. At the end of a meal. Oh, you've got your appetizer and your main meal all in one. I think it's a good deal, no? I mean, it is a good deal. Expensive, very expensive. It's expensive. But uh, yeah, I mean, just simple crust. Uh, yeah, the simple crust. Why give so much valuable space of your stomach to the bread when you can have like the pizza, the rest of the toppings, the main part, the main part, the good part of the pizza? To be honest, I can't answer for everybody, so I really don't know. But I can imagine maybe some people leave it till the end. Maybe they have a dip, like a dip or something that they... Pure crust. Pure no crust. dip, no uh, extra So are you things. saying for people just to kind of leave it out? Yeah, just to leave the crust. Like, come on, if you're eating a pizza, I, I'm not saying like you're five people eating like a large pizza and you just like eat three slices without the crust. No, that, that would be insane. <laughs> I'm saying you're like me alone completely order a 12 piece pizza and like after the six pieces you're like this is heavy stuff and you decide for the for the enjoyment of the rest of the pizza that you don't eat the crusts mm -hmm. you just eat the main part of the pizza and you leave out the rest of the crusts i mean some people might want to hunt me right now who knows 
<laughs> Another unpopular belief or opinion. Pineapple on pizza. Look, it's a controversial one. I, I understand it, okay? I get it. I get it. I can respect it. But why fresh fruit? I, you know what it is? I think people like that contrast of uh, sweet savory, which I get. But I just feel like maybe fresh fruit is not the way to go. Like maybe infusing like pineapple in, in like the sauce or something. Like a puree. Not a puree, but you, you know how people have barbecue yeah, sauce yeah, yeah. on their pizza? Like maybe I mean, using it in there. The barbecue sauce on pizza, like to, to, to a small tangent, like if you get it with, usually it's paired up with chicken or beef, right. which like basically you're having a barbecue with cheese on bread. Generally pizza like has stopped being pizza. Like so there are some wild it. pizzas out there mm. nowadays, but like for simple pizza, like Take a normal, like, the average, no, like, uh, pe- special pizza that a, a normal pizza place has, or, like, classics, like, uh, if you put pineapple on a marinara pizza, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do people actually do that? I bet someone, someone <laughs> in that world is like, oh, no yeah, judgment. marinara and pineapple, yeah. There's I mean, no judgment here if anybody no. does that, but that's it. There is judgment <laughs> from me. I'm judging you if you do that. I am judging you very much. But generally, like, in a very salty pizza, mm-hmm. pineapple in, like, small cubes or very thin slices can work. Like, I've tried it. Not exactly what my ideal. Also, I like really salty stuff. So, like, okay, the pineapple took the saltiness away. So, maybe that was it. Mm-hmm. But generally, yeah, okay. Possible. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, if people enjoy it, I guess you eat whatever you want. It is a, it is an interesting concept. It's the same. It's the same thing as people putting like um, pears and blue pear and blue cheese on flatbread. It's a flatbread. It's not a pizza. It's a flatbread. But it's the same concept. You have the bread. You've got Parmesan cheese, and it's very fancy. But it's it's that sweet savory combination. I think people enjoy. But fresh fruit, really? <laughs> Potentially can work. I mean, there are some other very wild, well, except pizza-related uh, food combinations. And I will present you with one. Okay, I'm, I'm interested to hear. Macaroni and mustard. Don't knock it till you try it. Because let me tell you, when I was presented with it, I was like, okay. I'm eating worse than like being occupied by a foreign country, like being a prisoner of war. No, I tried it and the mustard and the macaroni without cheese, without sauce, just mustard and macaroni. You feel like the poorest person ever, like not even poor, like abandoned by God. You feel like nothing is going good for you. But then you try it and the flavor is explosive, especially with spicy mustard. Spicy mustard with macaroni. Sorry, it's just plain mustard. Plain mustard and macaroni. You like... uh, You don't put it in with something else or, you know, like add any other spices? Nope. Just macaroni. Wow, that's the first time I've ever heard of that. Yeah, it's it's a food combination. Uh, Again, you have to be in a very low place to try it. (laughs) <laughs> but it lifts you up. And that's that's the main point. That's its purpose. So, try it. Everything try it. I mean, m- probably you have tried pineapple or pizza because like it's a very popular thing. So, try it. And also, don't eat the crusts. But another unpopular opinion, belief and all that, maybe not food related. Mm. There's a lot of food related ones actually yeah, I mean, out I mean, there. Food is the one thing that like connects everyone. Yeah, I mean, that's true. breakup, connect with food. Divorce, probably can connect <laughs> with food. Going out with friends. I think it's also in our culture as well that yeah. we we're very f- food-oriented, family-oriented, friend-oriented. Yeah, like the, the family table, one of the most sacred stuff in our culture, like the po- to the point where you're doing something very important, like studying for panellinias or any exam. It's dinner time if you aren't on that table. At 2.10, the latest, 
Suddenly you start hearing like, bam, 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 bam. Why are you not in the table? So yeah, it's a scary thing. Yeah. Many okay. food related things about. Uh, any unpopular opinions? I can't actually think of any anything. Hmm. A thing, like for me. Now this is gonna. This might trigger some people, but. Oh, controversial. Yeah, yeah, very controversial. <laughs> A music, music in general, uh-huh. doesn't need to be over explained. Like, just feel the beeps, boops, and bops. Have fun with it. I don't need to get an explanation for any album that comes out, why I should listen to it, mm-hmm. why it's important, what the artist wanted to say. I don't care. I actually don't care. That's why I can enjoy a song in any language mm-hmm. if I like the beeps, boops, bops, and bops. Mm-hmm. And that's also why I can listen to Trap, Laika, and trash at the same time and have no problem with it. Okay. You, I'm, music. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm probably pretty much the same way. I, if anybody asks me what type of music are you into, I'm, I'm like anything that I like. If I, if, it, if I hear it and it sounds nice and I find it catchy or whatever, there's one, one uh, genre of music that I'll never listen to, which is pop music. Um, I, or, and trap, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. I didn't grow up on it. I just never really found it to my liking. I grew up on like eighties rock and okay, okay, and some Greek music and but uh, yeah, I mean some people don't don't need uh, you know the the background story on on music. I think it's good to appreciate yeah, the some artists behind it. I you know they they probably work they have worked very hard yeah. you know to create their music. Um, but yeah, I think an explanation for every single album or every single song or try to explain yourself even why you're listening to a, mu- a type of music, I don't think it's necessary. Indeed, and uh, for, to touch on a previous thing that you said, I had sworn in my younger years, mm-hmm. I'm 20 by the way, almost 20, not even 20, uh, in my younger years I had um, sworn that I would never listen to like Greek music and all that stuff. Then a breakup happened. That yeah. changes a man. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> you you haven't lived life until you have loved someone and lost them. I looked at the camera for a long time for dramatic effect. <laughs> Me in the future do something with it. I don't know. I think it's. I think yeah, that's true as well. I think I think if any big life event that's happened, we learn a lot from it. Well, it they're life lessons at the end of the day. True. Oh. Um, yeah, I think also music helps with that. You can kind of connect with it, and uh, some people find music um, an outlet, even for different things, studying, uh, listening to relax. Uh, at parties, you use music to you know. Uh, get the vibes and <laughs> get the vibe going. <laughs> get um, the party started. And uh, so music is, uh, I think, I think in my opinion, music is very helpful for a lot of uh, situations. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you don't need a whole background story on it, I don't think. Indeed. So I agree with that. Back to topic, unpopular beliefs or opinions. I have another one. Mm. And this one... I think is the spicy. No, um, the pineapple and pizza probably will never be topped. But it, it's pizza talks for, for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, pizza. The the, the pizza. We here. have to we have to bring that one up. Yeah, go ahead. <sighs> Not succeeding on panellinias is not a life-ending situation. Talking from experience here. Well, we are at Diri, so obviously did not come here from Panellinias. Actually, two times failed at Panellinias. But beyond that, my main point, and not even with Panellinias, generally as exams, unpopular opinion, and I say that as unpopular because I've met many people who are like, no, no, exams are everything. Mm -hmm. No, dude. 
chill. Today, I had a midterm on mythology. I studied 10 minutes while playing league. Okay, I'm, I may have passed. May. May not. I don't know. I'm fighting for it. I want the good grades so I can not burden my family with like paying a lot. But it's the other things in life, like being happy, mm-hmm. having classes that you actually want to have. Mm-hmm. And the grade, okay, it's a reflection of your achievements, but also for like students who are struggling right now with that, like either actually studying with the classes that they take, like level seven classes and beyond. I wouldn't know. It's the second semester here. I'm, I'm basically taking all the elected, uh, elective uh, classes and being like, haha, I have succeeded. No, I, I will probably fail in the future and be very, uh, I, I will cry. But main point of uh, this uh, opinion is exams, all of this stuff, midterms, finals, anything, they don't control your life. Mm-hmm. They are just a difficult part that you have to get through and I don't know about you me after I'm done with an exam it's like it didn't even happen like no stress about it can change anything uh, anyways and if people want to talk to me about it like oh what did you put in this what did you do in that like I don't care Mm -hmm. why argue about it why bother why start thinking about oh was are you sure it was that maybe it was that no just you ever passed failed Who knows? Live your life, go party, go have fun with friends. That's the best thing you can do. Yeah, I think uh, you make a really, a really good point. Um, Actually, going back to what you said about, you know, failing, there's a saying actually that says um, you can almost always guarantee failure if you don't at least try. Mm. So I think, okay, maybe uh, um, going for a tertiary education or even secondary school might not be somebody's calling in life uh, academic wise but there's always things you can do Um, I think what's really important nowadays to have is uh, skills yep and it's not just uh, academic skills and what you know you're learning actual skills that you can use um, uh, for example like maybe learning about um, to become like an electrician. It's very useful nowadays, especially there's not a lot of people out there who are wanting to do that. So there's quite a big demand for it, regardless if, you know, that's not what you want to do. It's always good to have a second skill in your in your in your pocket. Um, But yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think school and, and generally your life should revolve around your work. I think there should be a very good balance. And that balance also comes from being able to do the things that you enjoy and reducing your stress or the stresses that are going on in your life. Um, as far as exams go, I think it's always, well, it, you know, this is advice that you know, anybody would give. Always pre- try to prepare as early as you can. Don't leave things to the last minute. Yeah. Um, I'm also speaking from experience. Indeed. Um, I, I always study early. <laughs> yes, yeah, go on. Uh, look, we've all been there, okay. Um, I, I'm lucky this is my second opportunity at, uh, at uh, university. Um, I already have a finance degree, but uh, now this is, I'm doing an IT minor here. And this is my second opportunity to, to study things. And so I'm trying to do, learn from my mistakes and not do the same things that I was doing Um, in my previous studies, which was leaving things to the last minute. I'm guilty. Um, And I find that actually pushing myself to to form good habits has actually made my life a whole lot easier. Hmm. I actually have more time for stuff rather than doing the things I want to do and leaving everything to last minute. And you just end up feeling really bad by the end of it. And when it comes to the end of the the exam, for me, for example, I always felt really drained after an exam because it's like a huge burden has like been lifted on, off your shoulders. So um, no, I don't. I don't think uh, school and and uh, exams are everything. I but I do think you should put an honest effort into it. Yeah, truth spoken. Let me tell you, but this whole let's say, thing about uh, school and the pressures of school and the whole system, let's say, 
and lead us into the second topic of conspiracies. Um, with uh, the, system, I like it. the first one being for me, the Greek school system is rigged from the start. They are trying to lead you like a funnel into the Panellinias and they set you up to fail because everyone around you tells you if you fail, life is over. And that's because the government, and we will, there are many conspiracies about governments all around the world, but the government here in Greece wants people to flood the universities to, for it to not be enough space. Um, the people in the universities try to follow the same jobs so many jobs have many people so mm -hmm. in the end there are no jobs for the people that have the degrees and most people this is the scary part have to become essential workers essential workers yeah like okay, okay i mean n not only essential workers but like the government now from what i can tell needs a lot of people like to be work hands to be people on the field okay. and when the educated people are the ones there there's some value lost and since Greece for the majority can't really provide all those spaces that's why mm -hmm. so many people like go in other countries to uh, follow job op opportunities and all that stuff many people that uh, stick around here have to find very simple jobs their degrees get kind of wasted and then, then there isn't a whole unending cycle of the problems of Greece with the economy, the jobs and all that. But not to get into very uh, political or uh, let's say these times mm -hmm. problems, other conspiracy theories. From what I get, uh, you aren't, uh, how should I put it? Uh, an alien? <laughs> I'm not from here. Yes, first of all, not an alien. I'm not from here. <laughs> and enclosed in the internet from a very young age to have heard every single conspiracy theory out there. No, to be honest, I, I wouldn't have a clue. I've heard some things, but, you know, just kind of in one ear out the other. I just, no, I haven't even delved into the web to even begin to search about conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Well, so I think you'll be educating me on this. Yeah, there are, uh, m well, for a start, what is a conspiracy theory? Basically, something happens or doesn't happen or maybe happened mm -hmm. and you try to find a solution around it. Usually conspiracy theories, funnily enough, the government says something and the people are like, no, that isn't true. Something else happened. And that can lead you to many different things. Again, not to bring many political stuff, but like one of the most famous conspiracy theories about uh, presidents and how they got, um, yeah, uh, many, many conspiracy theories about that, but that's more heavy stuff, so we're gonna do the fun stuff, and some of the classics like Bigfoot. Does Bigfoot exist? What is Bigfoot? Is it a government spy? Opinions on that, have you like heard of Bigfoot? I mean, you probably know of Bigfoot because it's like a pop culture thing now, but generally uh, i thought it was always like um a story that that's told to kids mm -hmm. but no i wouldn't have a clue yeah bigfoot is one of the biggest consp conspiracies out there and like conspiracy myth tale all that is it's all interconnected okay uh i mean there are conspiracies about even like serial killers motives and all that it's a very wide topic that in the time we have left I have to very, uh, I, I have to simplify a lot, but to stick around like the Bigfoot and all the scary monsters under the bed in the woods and all that, the main point of them is trying to figure out if they are real. Most of the theories are either the unfun ones, them being, uh, uh, yeah, it's not real, probably a guy saw something in the woods and made the tale about it, mm -hmm. or the fun ones where they find a bone that could be like a bone of a random deer or something mm -hmm. or potentially it can be a part of the arm of the Bigfoot which is a giant man, an ape man, a monkey man mm -hmm. and I mean the, the Bigfoot I'm pretty sure originates in America don't quote me on that, getting quoted live uh, 
live. Um, but yeah, there are many myths and tales around the Bigfoot, and some of them are very brutal, like he yeah, attacks and kills people, that's a thing, I guess. And the others are just like big gorilla man just wants peace and hunters want to get him. I imagine for these con- these conspiracy theories to be somewhat believable, they have to have some sort of truth to it or some concrete evidence in order to, m- to make people believe it. Otherwise, I think it would just be just kind of forgotten immediately. I mean, on some sort of level. Now, I'm not saying big, but I don't know if they have any concrete evidence okay, for I that. Mean, but there are some pictures, but there's also like $20 monkey outfits in stores right now for the carnival and all. Uh, but in general, most conspiracy theories and some that have been proven right, uh, <laughs> most of them things the government said and then wasn't real, <coughs> assassinations, <coughs> Uh, tend to be proven by, uh, like, the facts line up, but there is just one thing stopping it, like, for an example, um, let's suppose that the CIA did something Mm -hmm. to a president, and it supposedly wasn't the CIA. Well, the next guy in the line worked for the CIA, had some agreements with the CIA, supported CIA in the court and investigation about the specific thing, but uh, the court and the judge supporting the CIA in that court decided that there was no further need for an investigation, so it stopped. So it's like the thing, okay, I mean, they probably did it and just stopped it to not get exposed, so (laughs) some conspiracies end there. Uh, Also, on the topic on conspiracies, uh, where I go to Uh, basically melt my brain with conspiracies and other interesting stories. Can we do shout outs to like large YouTubers and stuff like that? I mean, who's gonna stop me? Who's gonna stop me? Theano isn't here. I'm basically as much as a host as anyone right now. So, um, (laughs) for anyone interested in melting their brain, uh, Wendy Goon, I will probably like edit it here or like here. I don't know in which camera this is going to appear. But yeah, Wendy Goon is a person that does uh, many conspiracy theories, icebergs about conspiracy theories, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff to melt your brain. He also does a lot of like horror explanation and like YouTube, uh, not conspiracies, like YouTube sh- shows that are supposed to be real, like found footage and stuff like that. Okay. There's a lot of conspiracy about found footage. Uh, and he does many interesting videos in ab- about conspiracy and all that, so I suggest you check him out mm-hmm. if you're fried like me. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah. I think also Netflix has a few nice uh, n- nice series as well. Look, Netflix has a lot of series, has uh, brought up a lot of conspiracies and that, <laughs> but sadly, a lot of them are not that good or don't have a lot of detective work put in them. There was one that I watched recently, which I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, they still haven't concluded the case. It's still ongoing. They don't know exactly what happened, but it kind of indirectly points to what might ha- have happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's called The Vatican Girl. It's it's a docu-series that I actually really enjoyed. And it's okay. um, it's okay. actually in Italian, but you know, there's English subtitles. Subtitles, guys. Um, and basically, they haven't found... I'm not going to spoil it, have a look into it, but it's very, very interesting and you kind of, it kind of uh, stimulates your brain to thinking, you know, um, what happened, Um, could it have been this, and then you find out something completely different happens and it's just, it's very interesting and then you come to your own conclusion, which I think um, is, is, it's good for people to have their own thoughts and beliefs as well. But I think I found that one very interesting uh, from Netflix. Might check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally, I think like f- to have a good conspiracy theory, first of all, you have to be crazy enough to like anal- overanalyze all this stuff. Um, secondly, y- I mean, the conspiracy must be about something that people care. Like I can make a conspiracy of why people with that like pineapple on pizza are criminals. People would probably be interested in that. 
Um, <laughs> That's a bit harsh. <laughs> okay, not criminals, just special <laughs> in a very nice way. <laughs> I'm not blacklisting. <laughs> I'm just warning that if we order pizza and you say pineapple, you aren't getting any pizza. Just that. Uh, but yeah, a conspiracy theory must be about an interesting topic, mm-hmm. a mysterious topic or like a topic that can have many outcomes and must have some kind of twist and turn like some of the more recent uh, conspiracies that I have seen it's always like oh and that person was innocent until he wasn't but in the end up he was innocent again Mm -hmm. so that's an interesting thing something that keeps you on your toes always you know on the edge of your seat it's it it has I think conspiracy theories are so interesting and a thing that has thrived in the internet because like you can find a conspiracy theory about anything really not all of them good but you know uh, and it's like the mystery it's not knowing not knowing how to believe it like doing the research yourself because about some of the topics uh, from like again uh, Wendy Goon and other channels that I have watched I've done some research myself and I'm not a detective or like that talented let's say mm-hmm. but doing some of that work it's uh it's fascinating how many times you reach dead ends everyone reaches dead ends and the government also reaches dead ends but uh, supposedly they shouldn't have uh, which is very weird one of the cases again uh, in america sorry i have a lot of conspiracy theories about america <laughs> there are cases about people going missing in large uh, uh, woodland parks and are never found again and, I'm not, and I don't mean like they get lost and oh uh, we found their bones like three months later they had an accident I mean like person goes in is like with a friend group they turn around they come back friend is gone search party search party for a week never found for 50 plus years mm. disappeared off the face of the earth aliens maybe aliens who knows maybe the Bigfoot maybe the government Maybe the aliens that brought Bigfoot to help the government. Mm-hmm. I'm very afraid, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, has been uh, very fun. I want to be a guest again.